I'm Bob Ziegler, Director General of the International Rice Research Institute, and it's my great pleasure to welcome you to this DVD version of our 2008 annual report. Now, 2008 was really uh, an incredible year. Uh, it started off with a panic in rice prices. Rice prices uh, uh, internationally traded exceeded $1,000 a ton, triple the price of just uh, six months earlier. Uh, this caused, of course, uh, severe hardship for the very poor who depend on rice for their basic food supplies. It did, however, have a positive side, and that was to uh, sharply remind governments that they'd taken their eye off the ball in failing to invest in research and development and infrastructure maintenance for, for rice production and other staple foods. Uh, uh, so in the dark cloud of high prices, there was a silver lining to uh, work to improve future prospects of food supply. 2008 also saw a financial crisis, and that threatened to take uh, government's eye off the ball of uh, research and technology development. Uh, fortunately, all signs are that uh, decision makers realize that for long-term food security, investments in research and development, investments in infrastructure, investments in capacity building, are all going to be required to assure our long-term food security. Now, Erie, of course, is committed to uh, achieving uh, sustainable productivity growth, and our research uh, in 2008 uh, proved to be very, very successful. Erie is, of course, committed to maintaining food, uh, global food security by maintaining productivity growth in rice. We're also focusing on difficult ecosystems where rice production uh, is uh, unreliable. Farmers are victim to the vagaries of uh, uh, weather changes and over the medium term and short term uh, events such as drought and flooding can cause them serious uh, losses. Uh, 2008 marks the year where we rolled out uh, an incredible technology uh, that enables rice to withstand flooding uh, for up to two or three weeks. Uh, rice, like any crop, uh, uh, will drown if it's completely submerged for more than a few days. But this new technology that we call the sub-1 gene, or submergence tolerance, allows rice to, to survive long periods of, of flooding. And this will be a transformational technology. I don't think there's any question that 10 years from now, when we look at the uh, flood-prone areas, we will see lives of poor farmers dramatically improve because of this technology. Another major technological advance uh, this year has been moving the uh, development of golden rice, or rice that's high in beta-carotene, the precursor of vitamin A, moving that rice forward uh, one more step towards uh, its release. Uh, we're confident now that we have a golden rice technology that will produce high, reliable levels of beta-carotene that will, in fact, uh, improve the diet of poor people who depend on rice for most of their calories. We've been working very hard with WARDA, the Africa Rice Center, to improve productivity of rice in, sub, uh, in sub-Saharan Africa. Indeed, uh, we've worked closely uh, with the Africa Rice Center and the government of Japan to launch a, a, a multi-million dollar program to increase the productivity of rice and especially build the capacity of African rice researchers uh, so that they can lead the uh, rice improvement effort. Major investments made by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation this year in rice research. They have funded four major projects uh, totaling uh, over $60 million uh, to developing improved rice technologies for uh, South Asia and Sub-Saharan Africa. This has enabled us to tremendously strengthen our partnerships with national programs and the Africa Rice Center. We're extremely proud of the confidence that the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation has shown in our work. And we believe it's an indicator of the extremely high quality of work uh, that our institute continues to carry out, even after almost 50 years of being in existence. We've already begun planning for our 50th anniversary. Uh, Erie in 2010, celebrates 50 years of incredibly effective research to improving the productivity of rice fields and improving the livelihood of rice farmers. We're looking forward to celebrating this golden anniversary with 
uh, our national partners and our longtime supporters. While well, we've been extremely successful in our first 50 years, there is no doubt in our mind that the world will continue to need a public sector institution devoted to the understanding and improvement of the rice plant and its interaction with the environment. Uh, the question is, what will the nature of that research be that we will be carrying out and what will be the facilities that will be needed to do so? We can be certain that the revolutions in genomics and molecular biology and genetics will give us tools that we can barely imagine today that will allow us to tackle problems that were previously thought to be unsolvable. Uh, we will, however, need uh, infrastructure, laboratories, and personnel to take advantage of the new tools that will be available. Uh, for that reason, uh, the Institute is launching a major fundraising campaign to enable us to, re, uh, to replace our greenhouse and growth facilities and renovate our laboratories, as well as tap into the tremendous genetic diversity that we hold in the International Rice Gene Bank. I've gone on uh, much longer than I intended to, uh, but I just wanted to give you a little bit of a flavor of some of the uh, tremendous findings and activities that you'll see summarized in this, uh, this award-winning DVD format for our annual report. Uh, I wish you all the best, and I am sure you will enjoy browsing through this, uh, this report. So thank you very much.